Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to make a shepherd's pie for my client. And this recipe comes from Collard Valley Cooks, Tammy Nichols' channel, and I'll leave a link to her channel right here. Hang on a second. So, let's get back to this. Anyway, so again, this is from her Volume 1 cookbook, and it's Collard Valley Cooks, and I will leave a link right here. And this is her shepherd's pie. It is on page 25. And I have made this before, and it is absolutely delicious. My sisters like it. Both my clients uh, on the island like it. It's just a really good stick-to-your-ribs uh, recipe. So, without further ado, I think I'm going to just go ahead and get this started. I'm not going to talk too much in this video. I'm just basically going to play music and show you what's going on. Enjoy. cooking shows but since this is such a good recipe I decided I was going to go ahead and just do one um, it's such an easy meal and it's so good keeping an eye on everything so let me go ahead and wash these up and then we'll cut them okay before we start uh, doing the potatoes what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start browning the ground beef so what I have here is a pound and a half of ground chuck Ground chuck is kind of greasy, but that's okay. I can go ahead and just soak up the all the grease with a paper towel after it's through cooking. So let's go ahead and put this in here. I got this hamburger masher separator from Tammy, Tammy Nichols, Collar Valley Cooks website. If you go to her YouTube channel, there's a link where you can shop all of her utensils and beauty products and cookware, bakeware, spices, everything. It's a pretty good tool to have. So let's get this brown. All right, music time. Now Tammy's really good at peeling potatoes with just a paring knife. I bought her knife set, her Rada knife set off of her website and I've really enjoyed these knives. I'm sure your grandmother had these knives but they had a silver handle. I got the black because if I ever do get a dishwasher, which I highly doubt because I'm one person, why would I need a dishwasher? That, you know, these black handles will hold up better if you have a dishwasher. I, however, am not that proficient in peeling potatoes with a knife, so I'm going to use the Rada potato peeler or a vegetable peeler. And I do not have a garbage disposal. Don't want one. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go get a plastic bag and dump my peels in there and then feed them to the chickens. Be right back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my hair up for this because cooking with long hair kind of gets sketchy, so 
Let me just go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, in case you didn't know this, anytime you touch your face, hair, or anything else while you're preparing food, you need to wash your hands thoroughly, including your thumbs. Most people skip the thumbs. Wash the thumbs. Okay, let me go check on this meat. So basically, I just move everything out of the way and throw my plastic bag down here. And get to peeling. Guys, I am just so happy about my chicken. If you don't have a chicken, get one. If you can. Roosters are loud. You don't need a chicken to get it. I mean a rooster to get eggs. You don't have to have a rooster for a chicken to lay eggs. If you want baby chicks, you have to have a rooster. Looking good, looking good. Oh yeah. Okay, just in case you didn't know, never, ever, ever put potato peels or a pot roast down a garbage disposal because a plunger will not help you in your plight to unclog it. So, having said that, I've got my potatoes peeled. I'm going to drain them real quick and then I'm going to chop them up and I'm going to make them all about the same size so that they get done at the same time and I want them to be fork tender. That means when you stick a fork in it, it goes in just with such ease. So let me get that done and we're gonna throw them in the water and get this show on the road. I'm not sure, but regardless, it's great for picking up diced vegetables off of your. Let's cruise over here and see what we got going on. Okay, I've got my water going. It's almost, it's at a technical boil. It'll be to a, a complete boil here in a minute. So Tammy says, there's really not a whole lot of grease in here, which is good. So she said to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I find debatable, but it says teaspoon. There we go. And then you want one teaspoon of Weber Steak and Chop. I personally love the Chicago Steak and Chop. Uh, as far as comparison is how expensive one is over the other, I don't know. I order this off of Amazon. It's a very good, good looking. There we go. Sorry about that. Good looking spice. Okay, now, I'm going to be using two cans of this, but I'm going to only use one and a half cans because I think it's just a little too much. At least that's what I was told by my clients, so it's just a little bit, and the liquid out of one can. So I'm just going to use about one and a third can. I can always freeze these vegetables and use them in another dish. I really don't think I have enough gr ground beef in here. I may ground some more and throw it in here. It's a pound and a half, but it just doesn't look like a whole lot. And she says adamantly, do not use frozen vegetables. And then you add a half a cup of ground bra uh, brown gravy mix. Okay. And 
fact, I do think I'm going to add some ground, uh, more ground beef. I don't think it's hearty enough for my taste, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I had some already frozen that I had cooked up already frozen, so I'm just going to stick that in here to beef it up a little bit, no pun intended. Oh, and now my water is ready. All right, to protect myself from burns, this is boiling water. I just set everything in with a spatula. And when you pour something into boiling water, pour, pour it in away from you. See how that splashes? If I would have dumped out that whole big old bowl, that would have gotten me. Done. All right, that looks really, really good. Let me switch utensils. It's not going to tear up your utensils to hit the side of your pan. That looks better. Okay, I'm going to turn this down to low. The pan is hot, it's cast iron, it's going to hold heat for a while and continue to cook. Okay, since I'm one person, I don't have a dishwasher. Number one, I think they take up a lot of storage space. And being one person, it's so easy to clean up. It really is. So I'm just going to wash my dishes. And generally, I hand dry them. I don't let them sit out and dry because, you know, as you walk around, you kick up dust and all that kind of stuff. And it's just better just to put them, put them away. And that way, you know, they stay cleaner. So I'm just going to wash these real quick. And I know... Now, I'm going to be doing differently from Tammy's recipe because this is what hers reads. It says spray baking dish with cooking spray. Add half the potatoes on the bottom of the dish, which I will do. And then she said add the drained vegetables on the outside edge. Now, my client doesn't like that. He wants it all mixed together and just put the potatoes on the bottom, put the mixture in the middle, and put the potatoes on the top and cook them and bake it. And, uh, and it says top the rest of the potatoes around the edge of the baking dish and bake at 400 degrees until brown and bubbly. Now, here's an option. It says substitute canned veggies with fresh pre-cooked vegetables simmer in beef broth. So that is another uh, suggestion right here. You really should go check out Color Valley Cook's channel. So this is her volume one cookbook and nothing but goodness comes out of all three. So. Let me go ahead and get this started, and I'm going to put the mashed potatoes on the bottom.
Now I'm going to put this in the oven on 400 degrees until it gets bubbly. And when it does that, I'm also going to look for the top of the potatoes to see if they're brown and good. You know what I'm talking about, that brown good, kind of crunchy, kind of just a little bit crunchy. So let's get that done. So, with this being so flexible like that, if you try to pull this out of the oven and you lose control of it, you could get seriously injured. So let's just play it safe. I don't mean to nanny state you, but I'm just trying to keep you safe, that's all. But if you like to live on the edge, don't just skip this part. Okay. Just gonna wait on it till it gets nice, bubbly, and brown on those potatoes. So see you in a bit. Okay, the timer just went off, so let's see how this turned out. Let me open the oven for you. Ooh. Tables off. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Wow. Look how pretty that is. Seriously. Now come on, that looks good. That looks really, really good. Let me see if I have any paprika. Yeah, I do. Let's put a little bit of paprika on here to make it look good, or prettier. It looks good, doesn't it? Let's make it look even better. Now as you can see, I've gotten the kitchen cleaned up. Everything's cleaned up. I've got one pan in there, it's soaking but the kitchen is clean and I actually have my dinners cooked. So this is one week of my chicken and it's ready to go into the freezer and my other bag of cooked chicken for a week is going in the refrigerator. So all I have to do is go to work, come home and eat. So, that's my version of Shepherd's Pie, a recipe by Tammy Nichols from Collard Valley Cooks. Again, I'll put the uh, card right up here. I thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, and if you're not already, subscribe and hit that bell for further notifications. And I do appreciate you watching. I really do. So you have an awesome day.